Uh, hello and welcome to Exceed Learning. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically change the first n column names of the table that looks similar to this. So as we can see, we have two rows and the column names appear in both of them. And this is, this is an issue that we had from our client. He had an export from his system and the system exported data in a way that the months were properly added as a first row of the table, but then he had these deterministic uh, column names appearing one row below. So we had to make it dynamic because uh, depending on the export, there, there were a dynamic number of columns that could appear prior to these uh, names of the months. So basically you, can, you could have like a type column here and we needed to somehow dynamically address all those newly added columns. Uh, we created a solution using list zip function. And now we're going to show you how you can achieve the same functionality. First, and by the way, we're going to learn quite a bit about the, I would say, advanced encoding. So first, what we need to do, we need to push the data into Power Query. So let's go to data from table range. This could also be any uh, you could also invoke this uh, query from any other Excel table, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to use the same, the same table or the same Excel for the query. Now the data is inside of Power Query. What we can see is that all these values from Jan to December are properly added as column headers, but the issue is that these column names or these uh, row values should become the column names and this should happen dynamically. Actually, what we not want to achieve is that this column renames itself to continent. This column renames itself to country and this to segment. Segment, okay. If we segment, yeah, maybe so. Okay, so what we actually want to achieve is this part of the code. If we remove everything except the syntax in curly brackets, we can see that this is actually a nested list of lists. So this object contains three, this is a list object containing three lists and each of these lists has an old name and the new name nested inside of that list. So we need to get to this kind of uh, an object, but make it a dynamic one. Now we will duplicate this query and let's start from the source step. The first thing we need to do, we need to somehow dynamically get the address from until which we want to, uh, let's say we want to promote these uh, row values into column values. And for that purpose, we will use an anchor and we will use this text, text of gen as an anchor text to get the position of that column in the list of whole columns starting from the first column to the right. We will use, so this is the sole step. Let's step insert step after this one. So we keep this as a source. And what we want to do, we want to get the, the names of the columns, uh, the names of the current table. So let's go with table dot column names and the source, the step is called source one. This way we receive a um, uh, list type of object. What we now need to do, we need to use a list dot position of, which is an M function, which will return the position of text that is found inside of this list. And the text that we are searching for is a text called gen. After we confirm, we will receive a number three. So number three is the number, or basically number three is the, if you go to, so number three, the indexes in Power Query starts from zero. So number three is actually the fourth column in which it found the value of gen. Now let's remove this one 
this uh, that's, let's rename this step to number of columns and now we will add step after this step will save this position number three what we now have to do we now have to check uh, or we now have to return the list of all the values or all the column names prior to gen so for that purpose let's address again the source step so let's address the source step and now we will again use the table dot column names to return the list of all the names of the, of the columns and now we will use function list dot first n of the list of all the column names and we will return how many how many uh, items from this list the number three or the first three items or the number of columns variable num of columns variable as we can see we can save a step and then we can address it from the other from a step coming after it okay so let's call this one let's call this step uh, old names now this is the I would say easier part the harder part is to get the names of the first row of, of the columns uh, that are in the first row of the table to become a list of new names we will insert, insert step after and again we will reference the source step okay and now what we have to do is first we need to access the first row of the table or we need to access the first record of the table in power query we access records or rows in the table with the curly brackets syntax and the power query index starts from zero meaning that if we access the source with the curly brackets zero syntax that will access the first row of the table as a record and as we can see this is now a record but we need we need to have a list object we cannot work with records we cannot find the first we can but this is not what we have to what we want to achieve we want to access only first three rows of the list so in order to get the list we have to use the function called record dot to list and we will push this variable in it this way we receive a list from the record now what we have to get is the first three items of this list and this is the same syntax as in old names so we'll use the function list list dot first n of this variable or this uh, formula and we will again use num of columns columns as the number or or as a dynamic number of the list of the items of the list that, that we want to preserve we will rename this into a new names what we now have is two lists first with all names and the second with new names what we have to achieve is this kind of nested syntax in which we have one list and each list has a combination of first item of first list and the first item of the second list and for that purpose we can use function called list zip and this function list dot zip will do the mentioned steps or it will merge the first item of the first list with the first item of the second list and we'll repeat the same for every other item so we'll do list zip and for that inside of list zip we will in curly brackets add both old names and new names and we'll close the round brackets now we will receive the syntax the same syntax that we have in the upper list 
in app object, but this is not dynamic. We'll rename this step to rename columns, renamed columns. And what needs to be done, finally, we will again insert step after and we will also again re reference the source step. And now that we, that we have the syntax, we can use the table dot rename columns function over the source step, but for the argument of renames as lists, we will now use this variable called renamed columns. When you confirm, we get those names of the uh, of the columns changed or renamed by, by the names coming from the first row. And this is also dynamic. So we can now remove the first row and let's load this to Excel. We will receive two tables. So this is the source table, this is the result. If we were to add a new column here and say that we, not, we need to have like a new uh, column name, like a type which has values A and values B, if we go to the Power Query script and we refresh it, it automatically changes to address also this new column that is added and basically it's dynamic in a way that you can also if we were to change the position of the columns for example let's change this position to the second one and let's refresh this table it will automatically uh, understand the new structure of the data and it, it will again properly uh, promote headers coming from the first row while keeping these static headers untouched. So this is how you can achieve this kind of functionality. Uh, we used list zip, we used a lot of M coding. So if we were go to back to the, to the Power Query, what you need to understand in Power Query, you can use like a variables, let's call it them variables, uh, which can help you create a parts of the code that, that you can later on use to create the final syntax or the final M code that will be used to clean the data, shape the data or change the data in the way you want. And then this last step can access the first step with, with the use of all the intermediate steps as a helper steps to create your final solution. So, Hope you had you enjoyed looking at this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them down in the video, under the video. And if you like this, please hit like, subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.